good morning everyone. Welcome back to Access Machinery YouTube channel. It's been a while uh, since we streamed last uh, time. I'm Marina Slavianenko and I'm the manager of the of Access Machinery. And I have here today with me Andrew Vicente, our application specialist. Welcome. Andrew, well, well, it's been like six months, right, since we streamed last uh, time. Certainly, yeah, has. Uh, maybe the blame is on me, but I really, really didn't want to get up in the winter on a Saturday, so. Me <laughs> neither. <laughs> <laughs> the blame was partially on me. Winter's in Canada, much, right? So, right now, we're welcome in spring, and by the way, today is April 1st, April is cool. And so, we're going to crack maybe some jokes. We'll see how it goes. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, today, our topic is a little, uh, concept called the Smart Factory. And uh, it's been reason for lots of us in the media and uh, everywhere around what actually the smart factory is and what is it about and uh, who may be uh, the best candidate to start having a smart factory and having your uh, in-house manufacturing of machine products. So this is what we're going to talk today about. And, um, briefly, um, I would like to introduce what we're going to do today. Is, uh, we're going to be uh, two partners, and then we're going to begin to achieve this. So we're going to make some ca uh, custom electrical cabinets. We're, we're no longer machine dealers. 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 We're now, now manufacturing a show of how we can bring that in the house and how easy, easy, easy it is to be able to go with that because if we can we do, do it as a dealer, dealer certain, certain you can. Absolutely. So right now, we are streaming not from the uh, access machine and showroom, but from our smart factory. Okay, and here we go, we begin. We are manufacturing electrical cabinet enclosures. That's, That's right, right. custom enclosures. So, so when, when it comes to in-house metal fabricating, the, the, a, lot a lot of, of the people leave in the industry believe that, you know, there's supply chains, chains there's uh, just, just in time, there's lots of heat issues. And those those, are, those, those are, are necessary for today's production, and they, they absolutely do exist. However, However it shouldn't keep the whole sector a lot, lot of it because it's not as intimidating as it looks. All these, these terms, terms can be easily controlled, the more intelligent use of equipment, of software, software all together, streamlined for our process, and even down to the coding right from the software. software. So you know exactly what you're getting into, removing all the ambiguity from the manufacturing process. So bringing in parts inside has many benefits, including being able to control your workflow, control your supply chain. And, and then many other things as we go on, we'll talk about more and more. But, but when, you when you have inside inside a quick inside the house, you're, you're in control, control of everything in the process. And on, and on top, top of that, you're ready, ready to take on more projects than you would have maybe been shy, shy to take on. on. And, that's and that's what the software's software powerful because you can really push, push what your equipment does. Well, and you know what? I'm, uh, well, not obviously right now, but I used to visit many customers, many factories, many plants, and there are lots of equipment. Right, the machine after machine, and uh, um, so how does it fit in the image of the smart factory? Do like at least you and I are entrepreneurs? Do we need to buy like, a whole bunch of equipment? How it is going on base? So you're seeing somewhat of a remnant of, I believe, it's an era moving from the old industry 3.0 and the 2.0 standard, which was pre 20 uh, 2000s era. We're in now, and probably what you've heard is industry 4.0. Smart Factory brings into that. So these big plants are talking about all these different machines and all these lines and all these workers on the machines. These were very specialized pieces of equipment that took care of specific jobs in a plant. That was required back then. The machinery was specialized to the job at hand. But nowadays, we have equipment such as a laser and a brake press that can do highly custom work very quickly, very efficiently, and the software to tell you can we even do it in the first place. On top of that, in respect to the people running the machines, you absolutely still need an operator that's 100% to the success of your machine. However, a lot of laborers have privately told me that they are struggling to find labor. So now, Smart Factory not only lets you have less equipment, it also lets your, intellig uh, your operators work more intelligently and efficiently. So perhaps the operator on here, while the machine is cutting and working, they can go to the next station and continue working on the next machine, doubling their production output and also being more of a skilled operator, bringing more to your company as well. Exactly, and that's great to hear. So again, uh, uh, the laser machine that you see behind us can easily um, do 
Custom work. shapes, C custom anything you shape, want. Yes. Uh, thin materials is no problem, specifically on this model. Smaller footprint, as you see, so that's why we have it in our <laughs> in our factory. And that's why, <laughs> because on this machine here, it's very, very capable, so we can do everything from marking and cutting, and we're able to control all those costs now and make whatever prototypes you want to make and get approval from the customer as well. Yeah, so you can shear, you can punch, not punch exactly, but do the work as you would do on the punching machine. That's right. You can do plasma cutting. So fiber laser, basically, it's all in one machine, right? Correct. And it doesn't take much space. And also, the, the uh, after we finished cutting, right, mm -hmm. what are we going to do next today? Well, we would take it to the brake press for the next part of this, because this custom enclosure that you'll see shortly is required some bending as well. And again, a brake press is a very dynamic machine as well, with different tooling, different setups you can make high variety of different shapes, unlike a press machine, as you were mentioning on the plants before, mm -hmm. where you have tools and dies that are matched to the job, and, a, and a, they know it as a die changeover. That's just worked into the cost of the machine. But in nowadays, fast production, low lot sizes, less storage, you, that is becoming less and less feasible nowadays. People don't want lots of 1,000 parts anymore. They want 100, they want 50. These machines are perfectly suited for this. Yeah. Okay, Andrew, we, uh, it seems like we're perfect, right? We got laser, we got the press brake, we're ready to start our manufacturing. Are we missing something? How are we, we gonna, are. Uh, yeah. We definitely are missing, yes, the software <laughs> that powers it, that's right. Because without all this intelligence needs a strong software behind it to assist everybody, make sure we can do the job and make sure that it can happen. So why don't we take a look at the software right now and give it a shot? All right, so let's take a look at our software package. Here we go. This software is called MBEN and it's by Metallics. It is part of a suite of many different softwares that control each other. Here we have a box assembly, as I mentioned before, and we have two different components. I'm going to start with this box component right here. We are directly bringing in 3D files, and as you can see, our brake press is also simulated, frame and all. We automatically select tooling, and we select the tooling together. And I'm gonna to choose this tooling, for example, but we have different options here, whatever is in your plant, and in this case, what we have in our plant. I'm now gonna do automatic sequencing. I'm gonna let the software decide what the best sequence for things would be. In a moment here, as it loads the sequence, you'll see many different options appear, and I can choose from a list of them. We already got one option, and they will start to populate now. As you can see, the software works through many different orders of things, depending on how it wants this part wants to be bent. I can choose many different options based on how I want to bend the part, how I want to handle it. I'll just stop it here. And usually my, my favorite thing to do here is choose something with the minimum amount of flips to reduce confusion when manufacturing the part. I click through the bends right here and I can just take a quick look at everything. I found something here I don't like. I don't want to gauge against that, that's dangerous. So I'm gonna flip that part around. As you can see, this is quite the complex part with many different bends, but the software's already giving me a good solution. You are free to move around anything on this bend as well. Or you can just trust the software to do what it does. But in this case, I'm gonna change this bend. All right, the sequencing is complete and I have my station set up all for me and the spacing. Now I get to watch the bend sequence here. Uh-oh, looks like we had a collision here. Let's take a look. It appears to be quite minor, but I'm glad the software told me about this. I'll have to pay attention when I actually bend this part, but we'll continue. Perfect, part looks good. All right, looking at this bend right now, that looks good. All right, I'm now gonna do a, now I'm gonna do a cost analysis here, and I can see my general setup time. It says it's gonna take about a minute and 15 seconds. And according to each part here, I'm gonna take some time to stack it, five seconds, and approximately I should be charging $14 to bend this part. 
per part. You can now save the NC, which I'll directly put into the brake press, simplifying the processes here. I'm going to save this NC now. And now I go into the flat design, automatically unfolding and putting into our next software. Here I can just press auto cut, continue, and now it starts cutting. Perfect. Does all the lead-ins, everything for me. And even did a little secret you'll see up there and shortly when we actually cut this part. But this super simplifies the process. Let's move on to our next part. Now I'm going to move on to this part. I'm going to try auto process this time. What that means is I'm going to try to do everything I just showed you there completely automatically and see if it can do the same thing. Software is going through automatically, checking everything. That includes the tooling, the sequencing, everything is automatic. Looks like it found a solution for me. Excellent. Now all I have to do is continue here on the sequence and take a look. That looks great. Let's save this NC as well, but you've seen that process as well. And now we're also going to take how long this job takes. So according to this, I should be charging $8 to bend this part per part. Save the NC as well, and then save the unfolded design. And repeat the same process as before. Auto cut, nice and easy. Now we're going to nest this part actually on a sheet of steel. So of course you buy sheets of steel in bulk, and you need a much larger sheet to actually put it on. I'm going to add these parts, and since they're a one by one assembly, I'm going to make an assembly of four different assemblies. Automatically do everything for me. Perfect. And there's my favorite word again, auto. Automatically run everything. You can see it's automatically nesting for me, I'm laying it on the sheet for the best utilization so I can save the most amount of material. Perfect. Now to the second nest, we get a preview there. It goes through some computations right here to check, just to make sure everything's perfect. Excellent. That looks great. So we got two different nests here now. Let's see how much these are going to cost. According to the software, I should be charging $80 to run both of these parts. So that, and that's just the cutting process. So between the cutting and bending process, I should be charging about $120 for this job, just based on the processing. And of course, I could add a flat rate on top. But it's a good idea to know how much I'm actually, how much I should actually be charging based on the gas, the material used, how long it's going to take, and paying my operators as well. We now generate an NC for everything, and we get a nest as follows. I can also simulate the nest just to make sure everything is OK, and it looks really good. Perfect. Well, Andrew. Yes. It was great and, and very, uh, you know, vivid. And when Andrew was busy with the uh, programming parts and doing calculations, and as you see, nowadays everything comes down to operating cost, right? And we can easily find out how much it's going to cost us to make parts on our equipment. And uh, what I figured out is, let's say, if we're making parts six hours per day and using our laser and a press break, it's going to bring us to return on the investment as soon as it's 30 months, right? And uh, considering, again, we're not going to be labor intensive because basically we will need one operator 
and one programmer, or that person can be operator and a programmer. Right. So it seems like we are on the right way with our business. That's plan. right. Software is so important, and it's one of the most overlooked things when coming to the smart factory as well. Having a great software, being able to anticipate, it's that knowing is. It's that knowledge ahead of time, knowing what you're getting into, knowing that you're quoting correctly so you don't get beat up by other competitors, or you're not undercharging and actually losing money when you don't realize you are. So knowing how much it's actually gonna cost you lets you control and work around that cost. Maybe make deals and of course, maybe even get a bulk deal and then you can you know, um, chop it all up like that. And uh, that's why with prototyping specifically on this part, I mean, the costs are a bit higher because I put a flat rate in there as well. And that's, what, of course, is what you would do because you still got to set up the machine regardless if you run one or a thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's why software is, is incredibly important for this process. Yes. So this is nesting software. At the same time, we have also our own software on our equipment, which is called Derma Cloud, right? And that software is integrated as well and helps us to do the, our forecast as well and to see our equipment performance to monitor it, right? That's right. So that we can decide if we uh, need to, we can, there's more capacity and we can load more, or let's say we're perfectly fine and we're on our plan, right? Okay. So uh, right now we're moving to our next uh, showcase, which will be actual laser cutting. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about the machine that you see behind us. It is a Durma uh, compact laser HDFS model. And today we're gonna to be cutting. We're gonna be cutting some steel as you saw in the video and then we're also gonna be cutting some stainless steel. To, we're gonna make this assembly live right here in front of you. And that's the point of this whole demo here to show you that the whole process is not as hard as you think. If I'm able to do it completely through and through, I'm sure everybody can. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, yes. let's take a look at our laser now and let's do some cutting. And. Um, Dear ladies and gentlemen, whoever is watching us, don't be shy. We're going to be uh, answering your questions, which is going to show equipment first. And then uh, after all of this, we're going to come down to the questions. And we will be more than happy to have interaction, in, interactive discussion with you. Absolutely. Please ask. Okay. All right. Let us begin the cutting. So we start with our Derma touch, uh, touch screen interface here on our laser machine. Nice and easy to use, very intuitive, and it's very process flow managed, just like the software. So we start from top to bottom, take a look at everything, and I can preview the parts on the display as well. After previewing the parts here and confirming that we're good, I'm gonna press go. So we start cutting some parts now. This is one millimeter steel, or if you wanna be 20 gauge steel. Being a fiber laser, we can pierce incredibly quickly and cut very fast. On this part, we're almost near 1,000 inches per minute. We're gonna see some neat cutting processes here. Despite all the holes, we're almost punching as fast as we're cutting this. The sharp-eyed observers will notice that I put some fly cutting on this part earlier, and now you're seeing it live here. Fly cutting means instead of piercing and cutting the hole at a contour, it cuts the parts in a grid and multiple contours together to speed up processing significantly. We are now cutting at high speed around the part. To finish it off, despite all the complex contours, the rack and pinion system keeps up. This laser is powered by all Siemens components on the drive system and control system, and then we have a Prestatec cutter head that keeps everything stable, and also, of course, without our laser source, it's IPG laser source that is also built in Germany. Looks like we had a small collision there, but that's okay. The head reads it, detects it, and immediately resumes again. The head is sensitive to any changes in the material and double checks that everything's okay. Again with the super quick pierces, we'll see some fly cutting shortly. Looks good. So gases are a major cost of a laser. Fiber lasers are so efficient now on energy that electricity is no longer the main cost to consider. It's more about the gas costs now. So being able to know ahead of time how much gas I'm using is very important as it is a majority of the costs of a fiber laser system. 
Now the special part is here too is that I've quoted the customer based on nitrogen usage, but I've also decided to use air cutting for this as the customer is not picky about the edge finish. So instead here, I'm just doubling up my gains because now I can use a compressed air system that's already in my plant to process these parts. By being able to arm yourself with that kind of knowledge, you can make informed decisions on these. I also had a preview of the cycle time. I knew this part would take about three to four minutes, and that's about what we're getting at here. Got some more nice fly cutting. Perfect. Looks really nice, despite all the corners, no problem. Lots of control here. Moving on to our final part now in our nest. Again, with our super quick piercing, this really takes down the time. Speed is important, but the piercing is very important as well, as that, that takes up most of your time in these parts. Almost done with this nest here. It looks like our estimation was correct. We're almost at four minutes here. Final contour is coming around, no problem. Lots of control. Excellent. If you have any questions about that steel, please, please ask and we'll answer as we go to the end of the page. Anything you see here, no problem. Great looking part here, despite me using air cutting. The cut quality is excellent and very consistent. Look at that part. Looks just like the photo of the 3D render. No edge problems here at all. Looks perfect, despite using air. All right, let's move on to our second part in the assembly. Here we're cutting some stainless steel film covered. This is 1.5 millimeters or 60 thou or 16 gauge, take your pick. So we're right off the bat, we're using fly cutting, and I've heard many times where you have film cover material, fly cutting is not acceptable, or you have problems with piercing. If everything's tuned right on the laser, we can do anything we want here. Again, we are also using air cutting on this part. Stainless steel actually loves air cutting. It cuts with very high quality, and on top of that, we can go much faster. Normally stainless steel would actually use a lot of gas, so this is a huge advantage for us being able to use air on this part. More fly cutting there, that's gonna save us plenty of time on that. Normally I'd have to pierce those holes one at a time. You can imagine how long that would take. Perfect. This larger contour that's coming up here would normally be an issue and might cause what we know as a tip up, which would hit the head and stop. But in this case, the software recognized that this contour could potentially tip and automatically put a micro joint. I didn't even have to think about it. It even micro jointed the part for me because this part is thin and risks falling out or tipping itself. So it was again, safer to micro joint this part. Again, despite being film wrapped, we're having very little issues here. A lot of this is thanks in part to the press attack head, which is nice and stable, keeps the head standoff perfect. It's very important to make sure the head is stable to the sheet, so high quality components such as the press attack head make this possible.
If you have any questions about cutting through film, please absolutely ask us in the questions below. Final contour is coming up here, it looks nice. As you can see, these parts are very contour heavy, but we're still going through them very quickly. And that's been thanks in part to the fiber laser technology by IPG. Excellent, looks really nice. Right through the film, no problem. No wasting time with vaporizing. We just cut right through. Despite using air, cut quality is perfect. Well, Andrew, thank you so much again. It was no very impressive uh, showing how our laser can cut. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about um, cost involved of using a laser. As you mentioned that you use uh, stainless steel mm -hmm. and uh, you managed to do air cutting on it, That's right, yeah. right? And the other option is would be to use nitrogen. Yes, yeah, so and nitrogen prices are, are very high right now and deliveries have uh, become very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. uh, so air cutting has gotten more and more popularity over time and I cannot stress it enough if, if customer requirements allowed it or they have no preference, Air cutting is just going to be an incredible advantage. And for our fabrication here, we're doing well already. We're already doing the best things, so I feel really good about our little company we created here. <laughs> Perfect. So in case we know that we're cutting those materials and this is all what we're going to be doing, right? It makes sense for us to invest in a powerful compressor. That's right. And save money on the gas. And maybe we can uh, come down from 30 months to 24 on getting our return on the investment. That's right. The other option might be as a considerate and uh, those systems are becoming more and more popular nitrogen generation systems right right and uh, stay tuned we may have one in our showroom as well just to show like different technology and different cutting that's right uh, at the end of the day the nitrogen generation systems is, is the same idea as the air cutting it, it's controlling it and understanding your costs and knowing what to expect not being having any downtime due to a delivery delay, not being subject to gas contracts that can be up to 10 years now. Uh, and on top of that, you can still have changing gas costs. Some contracts I've seen, they're allowed to change the gas prices in the contract, which is mind blowing to me. <laughs> That's right. So you're waking up and all of a sudden, instead of 15 cents, you're paying 20. That's right. Right? And uh, therefore, you're losing control over your production, right? That's right. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the bones of our machine here. You mentioned that we are powered by IPG as our laser source, right? Yes. We have a president cutting head that everybody were able to see. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another great German uh, company. What is... Uh, what is our electronic components, like majority of them? So the majority of electronic components in this machine, including the servos, the drives, all the electronic, all the very important parts of the machine is all Siemens built. And Siemens is a very well-known German company. And all those components are also built in Germany. They're not the knockoff ones. They're built in Germany parts, just like the Presatec head and the IPG. So I always like to joke with this machine. It, it's built in Turkey, but all the bones are German on this machine. So it's a very, very robustly built machine very tough and that's why we're able to push it and still maintain our ROI and everything's great. That's right. Technology and components, that what makes machine as a machine, that's right? right? All right, so I guess this is a time to move to our next step and it will be final step for today. Mm -hmm. We uh, nested the part, we did the cutting mm -hmm. and right now we need to bend it and then it will be ready for final assembly. That's right, I'm very excited with the last step. So we're, we're, we're creating a live prototype right in front of you and it's pretty amazing. And let us begin with the bending now and let's take a look at that. And I'll have a sip of coffee while Andrew working. This is an electric press break we have here, the ADES 1240 or 1240. We have a few different options on this machine I'm gonna go over while we are bending this part here. So as you can probably see, we have Willa style tooling here. 
Willow style is easy for clamping. We'll have a few examples later of why that's useful and incredibly useful, I should mention. I also have a, a nice display in front of me that's telling me how to position the part. Uh, there's no way I could memorize every different part and prototype that came through our production facility. So that's why we have a screen to tell me how I should be bending this part. It tells me where to flip it, how to position it. And this part is not symmetrical with the holes. I want the holes on the specific side. I need to have it the right way. So again, the drawing helps me make it symmetrical. Or not, <laughs> not symmetrical, I should repeat. Because I've simulated this, despite these being really tight bends, I know ahead of time what it should look like and how it's going to work. We now have to enter box mode here because it sees the side flanges, and that's a standard safety system in our machines. With a simple double press of the pedal, we can override the system to confirm that our fingers are not in the way. Perfect. Now, because we have a Willow-style system, this part required me to move the tooling in the middle of the part bending. But because it's so quick to clamp and move parts, within five seconds, as you saw here, I moved this part over to make this bend. No problem. Back gauge is very accurate, so I can gauge against a bend because it already compensated in the software knowing that when you bend a part, your back gauging against the bend will be different. That's a great looking bottom of the part there. Nice and tight bends. Even despite that relief in the middle there, I was simulated in software so I knew I could create that. No surprises on this part. On our Dell MDA-66T control here, I get a simulation of my tooling so I know where to put the next tooling setup. I can take a look, I can move them around, make quick changes to what the tooling should be. And because I have a Willow-style tooling system here, it makes it nice and easy to look right away at it. There's our next program, automatically loaded. It's as easy as a snap with the Willow tooling system. Normally, a tooling setup would require a lot longer in this as you have to turn a, turn a nut and a thread and have to push the tooling through. But here, it's just as simple as a button and a snap in and slide. I'm just following the on-screen command and know where to put the tooling. It tells me exactly where to go. We have a nice ruler on the top telling me exactly where to put the tooling. Well, the punches are in. Now let's put the dies in. It's almost like Lego. Just follow the instructions. Perfect, easy as a snap. Now we have a four axis back aging system. So I'm gonna, what's nice about this is that I'm gonna use the left finger here to gauge against that flange so I know exactly where to put the part and no guesses. We have to relief between these flanges or we're gonna have an issue. So the, extra axes on this one, being a four axes back gauge, so I can move the fingers independently, I can move the X back and forth, and I can also move the R up and down. Gives me lots of flexibility on this part. Look at that, even with the film on it. Customer wanted protected finish on this box. Yes. All right, there's our finish completed here, <laughs> our completed enclosure board. right here. So we have a really, it's actually really tight this one, but as you can see, it comes apart like that and it just goes back together. Customer requirement was to have this part as tight as possible, but that's what's great about the accuracy of our system is I can put it together and it's very tight, but I can put it together as you can saw there. No problem at all, nice and tight. So tight I don't even need to mount it, it won't even come out. It's like a dairy Excellent. cream when they turn it upside down, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Well, how many boxes approximately we can make? Like, uh, it took us how long to make the whole thing from the nesting, cutting, and bending? Well, 
I knew through the software already how long it would take, so we had to make four of these prototypes. So the software told me it's gonna take six minutes to cut it, okay? On top of the pro time it took me to program, which you saw live, it wasn't that long, it only took me about five, six minutes, and that's me demonstrating as well. And then on the bending, it was approximately, it said about a minute and 15 per part, and that's including setup. So once the setup is done, that just comes down and down and down as you bend it more and more and get more comfortable with the part. So we could push one of these enclosures out probably every 10 to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and we're charging $80 for these right Excellent. now. So our productivity is super high. It's super high, that. that's right. And we've controlled that now, and now the great part is now we know how fast we can make these. Perhaps we could offer a large-scale discount. We know what to expect on these parts. We know what our bottom line is. We know what we have to charge. So now we can be in a stronger negotiating position because we're, we have the knowledge of this part, and that's the idea of the smart factory. Andrew, I really like our business. Me too. I think we're going to do well. <laughs> All right, um, I think we forgot to go over the brake features, right? Correct, that's right. So the, uh, the electric brake over there, as I was talking about with the parts, so I talked about a few of the features. So the ADES 1240 or 1240 is an electric press brake. So that means instead of hydraulic systems, you have motors directly coupled to the ram to move the ram up and down. And that made those approaching speeds, as we call the ram comes down, the approaching speeds are very, very quick. Uh, now, it was so quick that it was actually hard to mention in the video because you saw how quick I was making these bends. And that's partially because I don't have to wait for the motors or the, or the fluid or anything like that to delay. I can keep hitting that pedal and it keeps coming down nice and fast up and down. And that's the important part of the electric. On top of that, you got the energy savings of the machine, the incredible accuracy where, again, this box is so tight that I can hold it and nothing shakes out. So incredible accuracy, energy efficiency, ease of use, the list just goes on with this kind of brake press, and it ties right into our whole idea of smart factory. And, that's yeah, and the press. beauty of it, it doesn't take much space. So overall, the laser and the press brake together, they take as small as 400 square feet. So that's you right. can imagine what you would need to have your in-house uh, production, right? That's right? And Andrew also mentioned before about the electricity that uh, nowadays with the equipment, it's it's not your major expense, right? At the same right. time, it would be good to know what kind of building you need and what kind of power you need to supply. That's right. Absolutely right. With these uh, energy efficient machines, I mean, there, there's also not just the cost of just running them or the idle cost. And what's great about these machines is unlike the machines of old, these machines go all into standby mode and use very little. They, they sip power while they're sitting there. But it's not just about how much they use while you're using it because we can include that in the cost. It's about the delivery of power to your building, the wiring you got to run. Those are all costs that often get forgotten when installing it and, and they get included in the ROI. They can run up a few thousand dollars very quickly and it's something to think about when you have lower power machines where you can bring that cost down as well. All right, I, I think we wrapped up all together the product that we are showing today. We spoke about our software, about the equipment and I think um, we uh, probably helped somebody and educated on uh, if you would like to start your own in-house manufacturing That's against right. uh, sheet metal products, right? So it's fabrication and then forming on the press break. And um, I guess we'll get into some questions now. I hope we yes. have some and we'll take a look. All right, so how do we got? Okay, so we got our first question right here. Okay, so how many toolings can we add into the online software? Um, as much as you want. <laughs> uh, so not just, uh, it's a good question, but I mean, it, the tooling list is, is as robust as you need it to be. It can also be European, American, custom tooling that you cut on Section a laser tooling, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and will of style tuning. So you can make anything you want. You simply just bring in a parametric 2D design and you can put it in the software. So whatever tooling you're going to want to use on your brake press, that's no problem. Are you mm -hmm. going to want to take the next one? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what is the power those machines run? I guess that question was about laser. Uh, mm -hmm. So our lasers come uh, as low as uh, uh, one kilowatt up to, uh, we offer right now 12 kilowatt, but 15 kilowatt is in the production, mm -hmm. right? I would like to point again that uh, Derma makes industrial grade lasers, so this is something to cons consider for um, scale manufacturing. That's right. Okay, and they, uh, also probably would be nice to mention the size. Uh, our size of our machines is uh, lasers is a five by 10. And next size will be six by 12, then it That's will right. be six by 18. And we also make custom size uh, lasers. That's right. Okay, I'll take the next one. What's the software using? Yeah, so that entire, um, 
entire software suite we used was a metallic software, so we had MBen for the brakes, and then we went to CNC CAD for the laser, but it's an all one integrated package all, all together. They even have a tube module, so any of our equipment can be powered by metallic software, which is great because it's all integrated, all the costs are integrated, and it makes for a very nice flow through the software, as you saw here. So, yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Um, next question. Um, can you cut with air? If yes, uh, what maximum thickness you can cut? We basically covered a little bit of uh, cutting with air on a laser. We can circle back a little bit to that uh, to answer the question about the thickness. Mm -hmm. Again, your thickness will depend on the power of your compressor. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, uh, let's say, if you know your materials that you're cutting constantly, it will be easier to calculate the size of the air compressor that you will require. And as Andrew mentioned, the best air cutting works on the stainless steel and the aluminum. However, you also can cut mild steel. Yes. And uh, the uh, thickness will depend also on the um, power source that you have on your That's right. On your laser. A lot of variables. Yeah. That's right. So for example, just give a brief example, let's say six kilowatt mm -hmm. laser. With air cutting, you could go up to, you could go right up to half inch on stainless, half inch on aluminum. You're gonna need quite the mighty compressor though. Uh, and on steel, you're gonna get adequate cut, adequate cut quality up to one eighth. Uh, you could push that to a quarter, but manage expectations on the quality if you can get away with it or if it's just a simple welded assembly, you have to analyze that. And again, at the end of the day, uh, you have to balance what the customer requirements are versus how much you wanna spend on the gas and et cetera. So but it's good to know that ahead of time. That's right. All right. Uh, how service provided for the uh, machine? I guess for the whole machinery, not only for one machine. Uh, <laughs> again, I'm very proud to say that uh, during these unprecedented times of uh, COVID, when uh, we are quite limited on the on-site uh, visitation, however we do it, we can uh, continue doing it. Um, majority of uh, questions, problems, issues can be solved online. Uh, our machines are can be connected online and our technicians can assist uh, your operator on site. And uh, we are very proud to say that for the past year, we didn't have any cases when our equipment was down more than six hours. That's right. We take care, because with the dermaclad system you mentioned earlier, we get diagnostics data, and not only can we remotely connect, we know ahead of time what's happening so we can articulate. Sometimes an error pops up and it might seem a little generic, but, and the customer will explain, well, I did this and this, but I can go through the logs and see. I'm not saying anybody's lying, maybe they just didn't understand how the process worked. It's just, now I can see right away, okay, this happened, this ah, okay, now I understand. It gives me a full understanding and I can respond much more quickly that way. Exactly, and prevention is always better than correction, right? That's right. So for the future. Do you have camera for cutting monitoring? Um, yes, we do. Yeah, we can install that system on the camera. That's a camera beside the head, so we can monitor. Uh, you can monitor from Derma Cloud. You could have it in front of the laser. Some prefer to do that. There's many different ways to uh, use the camera uh, system inside your machine. So most common way is to use it through Derma Cloud, just to monitor if it's cutting overnight, for example. Do you use only IPG power source on your laser machines? Um, as, a, as a standard, yes. However, our manufacturing, uh, manufactured Derma, uh, has their own version of the uh, laser salt, uh, source. It's called the Brilliance. Yes. And if anybody interested, we, we are more than welcome to contact us. We will send you information. On that. That's right. Okay, so let, let, me, let me take this one. What's the max mild steel and stainless steel you can bend with that brake? That's a bit of a tough question because you may have seen a, an air bend chart and you know, I could potentially bend, I could bend quarter inch on that my, if, the, if my V size is wide enough and my uh, width wasn't too, too wide. If it's the full bed length, I gotta you know, maintain probably one eighth and down. But if I'm, if I'm bending smaller parts, it's all about working with the tooling, working with the tonnage. So a lot of people think you need 200 tons to bend you know, a quarter inch or something like that. It, it really depends on how big the part is and what your acceptable radius and V size are. So if you need more details about that question, uh, you please contact us and uh, just send me what parts you have and I'll tell you if it can be done on that. Uh, Cause that's a bit of an open-ended question, that one. I agree, yeah. I absolutely agree. Uh, do you have uh, bigger sizes? What is the warranty period for the laser machine? Um, our standard warranty time on lasers is two years. It covers uh, parts and labor. And after that, you have an option either to extend that warranty or um, we're going to service you on call. 
again, laser machine is virtually maintenance free. However, you have uh, the list of what your operator needs to do before, prior starting the machine. And following those procedures, not only quintessential, but it also helps to make sure that your equipment is in a good shape and it's gonna be running as long as you want it. That's right, absolutely. Okay, can we extend the warranty period? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. You can absolutely extend it. These are good questions. Uh, we have any more? Let's take a look. All right. I believe this is Oh, well, thank you very much for asking the question. So thank you again for joining us for a, a very delayed, six months delayed live stream, but it's been great and it was a great subject to show you. And we have a lot more exciting things coming in this year and you'll see those coming down the pipeline. Also, if you want to see any specific equipment requests, we can absolutely facilitate that, be it a tube cutter, uh, you know, a brake press, uh, even a panel bender if you want. Those are getting exciting lately. Um, please let us know and we'll absolutely do a live stream on that. And any subject you want, we'll even do your parts on stream with your permission. Yeah. So, very uh, dynamic here. Absolutely, we are here for you. Uh, www.accessmachinery.ca, please contact us. In the meantime, we are in front of the long weekend. So it's Easter weekend in Canada and we would like to wish everyone happy holidays and stay safe and warm. And uh, until we see you next. Perfect, I'm gonna go sell more enclosures, okay? Yeah, Andrew, we have to go back That's to right. our business, Back right? to our business. Okay, bye. Take care. Take care.